Hi, and thanks for tuning in to another Humanware Snapshot tutorial video. My name is Greg Stilson. I'm Humanware's Product Manager of Blindness Products. In this video, I've got two products sitting next to me. I've got a Braille Note Touch and a Romeo 60 embosser. And what this video is going to cover is how to actually emboss from the Braille Note Touch to the Romeo 60 or the Juliet 120. The same procedure applies uh, to either of those enabling embossers. Uh, wirelessly, whether you're sitting right next to the embosser or in a completely different room. So the first prerequisite to this video is that you have to have the embosser connected to either a wireless or a wired network. And you can, if you're in a school or an office environment, you can speak to your IT staff and they can get that embosser connected for you. It's very similar to connecting a, a network printer uh, to the network as well. Um, once it's connected, um, and you can do that wirelessly, either the most simple way to do it is via a just a plain wireless router. And if that wireless router has something called the WPS button or a wireless protected setup button, you just simply press the WPS button on the router, go to the communications menu of the embosser and select WPS setup. Once it's connected, uh, you do need to first, and then we'll go through this in a second, you need to find the IP address of the, the uh, embosser. And that's very simple to do through the help menu, and I'll show you in a second how to do that. Uh, just make sure you write down that IP address so that you can enter it into your Braille Note Touch the first time. Once it's entered into the Braille Note Touch the first time, you don't have to do that again, and you can always just emboss wirelessly. So as I said, the first thing we need to do is identify what the IP address of the embosser is. And to do that, it's very simple. You just tap the help button once, which is the one bottom button to the left of the arrow keys here. So I hit the help button once, followed by the 10. So I'm going to hit help. Help. And 10. 10. Connected to router with SSID Phoenix. 192.168.1.1. Point 103. Okay, so what I heard was the IP address was 192.168.1.103. And as I said, it's good to write that down because what we're going to do next is actually put that into the Braille Note Touch in the keyword settings menu. And that's what we're going to do right now. So now that I have the IP address from the embosser, I'm ready to actually configure the Braille Note Touch to uh, enter in that IP address. And remember, you only have to do this the first time, and then it's permanently in the system. So what I'm going to do is from the main menu, which is where I'm at right now, you'll notice that I'm using the Braille Note Touch without the keyboard, because that's how I use it. I use Touch Braille myself. I've practiced quite a bit, and I, I've, I've found myself to be quite efficient with Touch Braille. Um, so I'm just going to be using the screen to type Braille on. And at this point, I'm going to go to W for word processor. Word processor, keyword. And it says word processor, keyword. I'm going to press enter to activate that. Keyword menu. It says Create. keyword menu. And at this point, I'm ready to choose what I want to do. This is where I need to go into the keyword settings. So if I press S. Settings. It says settings. I'm going to press enter. Settings menu. And in Best the settings personal. menu, I have three items. Manage personal dictionary. Spell checker language. The spell English checker language. Speech. And the last item, I'm just pressing the far right thumb key, embosser IP address, is embosser IP address. And if I press enter here, embosser IP I'm ready to now type in using computer braille the IP address. So I type in 192.168.1.103. I'll just check my braille and make sure that I didn't make any mistakes, which I am good to go. So I'll press enter. Settings menu. And I'm back Bye. at the settings menu. The IP address has already been entered, and I'm ready at this stage to exit with space with E. Keyword menu. I'm back at the Set. keyword menu, and I'm ready to emboss. As I said, you only have to do that one time, so now I'm ready to hit E for emboss. Emboss. And I'm going to press enter. Key files. It's asking me which file I want to emboss, and at this stage I'm just going to hit E because I know that I'm in the last folder that I was uh, saving things in. So somewhere in this folder is an embosser test, so I'm going to press E. Embossing test. Embossing test. Docs. And as soon as I press enter, remember this is a DOCX file from my uh, my word processor, my keyword, so I didn't have to do anything special. I'm just ready to press enter. Keyword. Embossing. Please wait three periods. It says embossing, please wait. Embossing. Thank you. 
So an alternative great feature about the Romeo 60 and Juliet 120 is that you can actually emboss directly from a USB thumb drive. It's probably the easiest possible way to emboss something that you've saved either from a computer or from a Braille Note Touch. And in this case, what I'm going to do is plug in my USB thumb drive now. I'm just going to plug that in the back, right into the USB port. It'll say USB storage added. USB storage added. There it is. And all I'm going to do is copy that Microsoft Word docx file, the embosser test document that I just embossed wirelessly. I'm going to copy that to my uh, to my thumb drive. I'm going to hit F for File Manager. File Manager. Key files. I'm back at my main menu, so I'm going to hit F and press Enter on File Manager. Key files. And oh, I'm right back in the last folder where I was before, where I saved that embosser test. So I'm going to hit E for embosser test. Embosser test. Okay, and if I forgot how to actually access the copy command, I can press the context menu button or space with M to tell me exactly what I could do right now. So I'm going to press that now. Context menu. And I know that copy somewhere is in this list, so I'll just press C. Copy backspace with Y. And I see that copy is backspace with Y. I'm going to press enter. Copy. Key and files. next time I know that backspace and Y is the shortcut to copy. I also know that space with D is the easiest way to get me to my drive selection. So I've copied the file off of my Braille Note Touch, and now I just need to paste it on my thumb drive. So I'm going to press space with D to immediately jump to my list of drives. Drive selection. Storage. And I'm going to hit U for USB. USB. And press Enter. Plus interviews folder. And at this point, I can just simply press backspace and V, just like on a computer, Control V, to paste. Interview boss and test. Ducks. And it's pasted and ready to go. So I'm going to jump back to my main menu. Main menu. Contacts. And I'm going to press the eject command because uh, it's always better to safely remove these thumb drives just like on a PC rather than just yanking them out. So I'm going to press enter with E to eject the storage. Eject storage. And I'll press enter the, bo USB storage button. the bottom command, which is space 456. It's the last item in the list. It says eject USB storage. So I'm going to activate that. Main menu. And in a few seconds, it'll tell me to safely remove it. Safely remove the USB storage. And I'm ready to go. I'll pull that thumb drive out. USB storage removed. And now that I have the embossing test.docs file, .docx file on the, uh, the thumb drive here, I can now insert this thumb drive directly into the embosser. And I'll walk you through how to actually find it and emboss it from, uh, from the actual embosser itself. So on the back of the embosser, I'm using, as I said, a Romeo 60 here. There's a USB thumb drive right where my finger is. It's on the, if I'm looking at the front of the embosser, it's on the back left of the embosser. So all I'm going to do is take this thumb drive and insert it directly into the USB slot. And I'm now ready to go through the menu and actually emboss the, uh, the file that I just saved. Okay, with the embosser uh, connected to my USB thumb drive or my USB thumb drive connected to the embosser, I can now press the menu button, which is the top button to the left of the arrow key. So I'm going to hit that now, and I want to find the print option. Menu, open menu mode. Okay, and I'm going to arrow down. Print. And print is the first one. I'm going to press the right arrow to go into the print section. Print previous document. Print previous document actually keeps a memory of the last document that was embossed here. I'm going to press down arrow. Print from USB memory stick. And print from USB memory stick is the next option. I'm going to press OK or the big circle one in the middle. Print from USB memory stick. Folder. And Interface. now I'm actually going to arrow down until I find my embosser test.docx file. The Russell, what? See? Embossing test. Docs. Em embossing test.docx. I'm going to press confirm or the OK button. Print selected document. And it says, Close. there it goes. So from time to time, there may be a new firmware that enabling technology makes available. And at that point, you can actually download that firmware software update uh, wirelessly over your wireless network or, or uh, your, your wired network at this stage. To do that, what you do is press the menu button. Menu. Open menu mode. And you're at the top of the menu. I just press the up arrow a few times until you find the user settings. Print. Protect. User service. User service. So I'm going to press the right arrow. Firmware update. And it says firmware update. I'm going to press the right arrow again. Firmware upgrade from internet. And it says firmware upgrade from internet. I'm going to press the confirm button. System upgrade starting. And it says system upgrade starting. And at this stage, it's actually going out to the internet and looking for 
any updated packages and firmware updates and things like that that may exist. At this stage, I don't know if any exist, so it's scanning and we may get feedback that it says yes or no. But regardless, at this stage, that's the exact process that you will go through if you ever need to upgrade the, uh, the firmware.